and welcome to Beach Grove Garden. We're back for another season of great growing. From veg plots to patios, window boxes to borders, we have some great advice over the next few months for whatever type of gardening you're doing. Yeah. And here is what's coming up this week. Out with the old and in with the new, hedging. And if you're a beginner, we get back to basics and talk you through some of the tools you really need. Plus, we are in Dundee to catch up with one of our regular allotment tiers. And this week, I'm at Old Schoon, looking to spend as much time as I possibly can in a cosy greenhouse. Well, George, First programme of the series, we always yep. like to talk about how has the garden fared, what's the weather been like? Right. Well, what's it been like over winter here, really? Wet, wet, wet. Has windy? that been the same? Oh, yes, fairly windy as well, no. but nothing too serious, nothing like that storm R wind that we had a, a few uh, no, years ago. No. <laughs> but I have got some figures. Okay. Um, and Eastern Scotland had its wettest October on record, going back to 1836. <laughs> and then also in December, uh, twice its average amount of rainfall, which is incredible. And look at it. That's, Here that's, is the result. The it's yeah. sitting there. Yeah. I mean, it's really sort of waterlogged in oh, places yeah. or the ground's just saturated. Horrible. Here we've had a very cold spell as that's well. Right. I mean, yeah. not deeply cold, but down to sort of minus seven yeah. frozen ground. So if you get frozen wet ground, I that's mean, when I think perennials right. and things are going to yeah. die. Well, anything that was on the margin, but the, the frost which we got in November, because we didn't have much frost, but one hard frost in November, and that has killed quite a number of things which are on the margin. You have know? you seen the ewes in the herb well, garden? They, they ah. don't look too good, we'll no. have to see. Well, that's waterlogging, you see, yeah, that's what happens. Might be. Yeah. OK, let's yeah. be a, bit, a little bit positive. <laughs> Some work has been done here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so we're going to plan a new area yeah, yeah. here, so a situtery. A situtery? Yeah, somewhere to sit. Yeah. Oh, do you know what that is? <laughs> Keep watching, you'll find out. <laughs> Shall we now go and have a look at the fruit yeah, cage? Yeah, on you go. You go first. George, I think we said we were heading towards the fruit yes, cage yeah. and what a transformation. <laughs> what a difference. I mean, the gardeners have been really busy over the winter period and they've top dressed all the beds with fresh compost. We've got new chippings in the pathways and we've got new edging board and the whole thing just it sparkles. It really looks It does good it. and yeah. I feel it sets off the plants. Yeah. And so knowing it. you, I would imagine that you've got something to fill <laughs> that bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Belt and braces as well, I would say, because we've got the netting here and back to those apples, we've got chicken wire just in case. Stop the rabbits getting to them. So what right. are you going to put in those beds? Oh, you wait and see. I think it'll be some <laughs> soft fruit. Yeah. Anyway. Got spades to the ready. Oh, for goodness sake. Every time I come to work with you, if there's a spade involved. <laughs> well, we can't do nothing, can works. we? Yeah, and well. you've already been busy. Yeah. We're shifting the rhubarb. Yeah. So when it came to lifting it, George, what well, were Well, what doing? I did was, I mean, it's been sitting over in soil over there and we weren't really very pleased with its progress. I think the soil was a bit impoverished. I, I think so. I mean, rhubarb, they're gross feeders, aren't they? Oh, aye. It likes it. So what I did was I, I, I dug about, well, about six inches away from the crown of the plant, all yep. the way around, severed all the big fleshy roots. And if you look at these, you know, there's, there's huge roots on, on these things. Uh, in, in the inside. Now, look at that. I mean, it look doesn't at them. matter yeah. that you've damaged that. No. Uh, the no, important no. thing is these little fibrous roots, because they're the yeah. ones that are going to take up the moisture. That's right. That's right. You've already dug this hole. Well, that's and right. I think, uh, sort of going in with a fork, we need to just yeah. break it up at the bottom to make the sure that you've still got good and drainage. To make sure that it's well fed, you can put some farmyard manure yeah. in. So this you've is, already put some on it's the all top. On the top. Yeah. So, so that'll get mixed in. Yeah. But what, a couple of spades Easily. or a bit more? Yeah. Well, put another one in as well. One for luck. And then, as and my father would say, in. mulch it in. Oh, yeah. definitely. Give it a good mulching in. And the variety, George? Uh, well, this is a variety called Apple Delight, which is a strange, strange name for a rhubarb, you know. It is. I think they've used apple because it's quite a green variety, right. sort of green and pale pink. Oh, well, that's fine. Maybe it tastes like apples as well. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, depth, right, into the hole and make sure that the crown when you're finished planting, that the crown is it's, just it's, at soil level yeah, or just yeah. above. You don't yeah. want it too deep, do no, you? No, no, Which no, is no, really no. important. I think that's a little bit wonky, actually. Yeah. Do you not think it's a bit like that? Well, you could put it like that. <laughs> I always knew you would move it. Anyway, I'm going to put some more compost around the side. Yep. Because we want to make sure that this grows well. And then you're just going to put the 
I am just going to, it. I'm going to you know, chop well, up the other soil. Well, look, it only needs one of us to do this. So well, what, are you, what are you saying I'm now? I'm going to leave you to it. That's <laughs> typical of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Now it's a catch up with Brian and he has found the perfect place for a spot of gardening when it's a bit cold. So we're back again at Old Schoon for another fantastic growing year ahead. I'm getting a bit saft in my old age and it's a bit cold today, so I thought we'd head in the glass house. I'd say if you could afford it and you have the room for a glass house or a polytunnel, then go for it. There'd be a brilliant investment. And that's the problem that we have up here in Scotland, is we don't have a long growing season because it's a lot cooler and the light levels are a lot poorer. But if we have our glass house, then you can extend both at the beginning and the end of that warm spell in the middle to have a longer growing season. So what I'm working in here is a cold greenhouse. I'm not using any heat in here to, to, to grow my plants. Saying that, in March, there still is a chance, and even April and May, there still is a chance of frosty nights. So I do have a heater that will switch on just to make sure everything's staying above frost-free conditions, because I didn't want any of the young plants that are growing to get whacked by those colder nights. When the sun does come out, it's going to get quite warm in here. So I'm looking for a, a growing conditions about 12 degrees. As soon as it gets 12 degrees and above, then maybe I'll open up the doors or I'll open up the windows to let that colder air in. So what I'm sowing here today is a tray of spinach. And as you can see, I'm using these little modules. So this is the compost I'm using. It's a peat-free compost. I really like this one. This is made out of composted bark, wood fibre, and some of that core, you know, the coconut fibre. We're definitely having to get used to, to peat-free compost. The way we have to manage them is slightly different to the, the peat-based ones that we've been working with for years. I'm finding it interesting with watering. See, when these plants are young, the top of the soil looks dry, and that was an indicator before to me that the plants needed a wee drink. And I've been pumping water into them, but then actually, if I've tipped the plant out, it's looked dry on the top, but the bottom of the pot's been soaking. So there's a first learning curve for me. And if I flip it over into the other way, so later on when the, the little module is, or the pot is absolutely full of roots, it looks like it's wet on top, but when I turn it over and tip the pot out, it's actually bone dry underneath. So I'm learning this year that somewhere in that point I should have put it on a lot earlier or planted the plant out. But certainly things to look out for. And again, the, the compost that I use clearly says that I need to start doing additional feeding after three weeks. So I use an organic fertiliser and just give them a drink or a foliar feed as well at the same time. So I've filled the tree up with compost and then I'm using this handy little stick. Now this is just one of those canes that you have that come in for supporting plants and as you can see it's got a wee nick in there. Now I've measured that and it's just over a centimetre and that's the exact depth that I'm looking for for the depth of my spinach seed that I'm sowing. Now, this is a variety called Amazon. It's one of my favourites for growing, for growing spinach. It's a good, reliable one. And I'm popping two seeds into each hole. And then when they come up, I'll maybe have two plants. I'm only wanting the one. So I'll, I'll pick and I'll choose the stronger of the two plants. And then after the seeds in, or, or after the seeds are sown, then we just need to give the tray compost a wee firming in. Even when a watering can is fitted with a rose, and we're watering overhead, it can still be quite rough for these little seeds. And I can actually flush them down maybe a wee bit deeper or even wash them off the tree. So there's a couple of little tricks we can do. We can actually soak the compost first and then you sow the seeds onto the compost. Or I like using this little tray. You then dip your tray in there and then the water just soaks up. 
Now for our seedlings, I'm using tap water because it's nice and clean. But every other plant that I have grown in the glass house, I like to use water from the rain butt. But there could be a certain bacteria that's maybe not so good for the seedlings, so that's why we always like to stick with tap water when we're using our seedlings. So the last thing I wanted to show you was the propagation unit that I've got here. So even though I've got a cold greenhouse, plants like tomatoes, cucumbers and peppers, they're needing a temperature of about 18 to 21 degrees to germinate. Now you can use the windowsill in your own house or you can get smaller versions of this. I've gone for a wee bit bigger because it means I can grow on my plants when it's still cooler outside. So fingers crossed by the time I get them into the glass house and into the grown bags, a nice big strong plant. So as you can see there's lots of benefits to have a glass house. If you have one yourself there's still plenty time to make use of it so get cracking. Well there'll be more from Brian in, in two or three weeks time. We'll look back and see what he's up to then. Meanwhile we've come inside because it's wet out there. <laughs> it's wet. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at what would be the best selection of long-handled tools because there's so many people now into new houses, got new gardens, maybe not a lot of space but they've got enough space to go out and garden. So what would you suggest? Well some of the essential have? tools isn't right. it George? Yeah, so yeah. shall we start with spades? We've got an okay. array here and I'm going to pick two to start right, off with. Pass them over. That's the there stainless steel one. Uh -huh. This is more the forged steel. Feel the weight of the two of those. Oh, for goodness sake. That's really heavy. <laughs> I wouldn't isn't want it? to work with that all day. This is, this is nice. Now, that's this my spade nice. well, at yours. home. Oh, right. And yes, you pay a little bit more for yeah. stainless steel, but it'll last. I think it's quality. Okay. It's easier to keep clean as well. Well, I mean, the soil just falls off this. Yeah. Now, could you hand me up that little fellow? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite this interesting because it's, oh, well, it's, it's quite low down. Well, it is. It's like an old man speed. Well, it is. See, that's my speed. And look at the well difference worn. in size. Yes. Well, like me. So there you are. Look. That's now, amazing. That's just with constant use. That's over, what, let's say 40 years of work that that's done. But that's one of your favourite oh, tools. That, well, I can use that now for hoeing between the rows because I sew things that just that far apart. Now, this is what we call the digging spade. Yeah. And you can sometimes get those spades with a tread on it. Now that's important because if you're doing a lot of digging in hard ground, you're going to end up by cutting a, a, a slice in the bottom of your boot or something yeah, like it's, that. Well, this is but a border that's spade. That's the border spade and this is a full spade. So the it difference is. in size is quite important. Yes, okay? but again, you see border oh. spade. I use my border spade, it's this one here, yeah. another stainless steel one. Yeah, right. And the nice thing about it is very light, you can get in between uh -huh. smaller spaces. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if you're planting, you're much better with a smaller one, a aren't smaller you? Than that. Just go for the one that feels comfortable in your hand. Yeah. So that feels really comfortable in your hand. So yeah. what about the forks again? Well, the forks are the same. There's, the there's same what size. we would call a border, a border fork. Yep. And that is an ordinary digging fork. It's a digging fork for heavy ground, yes. which needs to be broken up. That's what you want so you can get right down in it. And it's sometimes easier to put this into the ground, uh, you know, to, to uh, insert it in the ground than it is with a spade. So that is going to be handy Good for, for digging. Break and breaking, breaking up. up. You Absolutely. know, when you've got the clods, yeah, you actually yeah. can use that That's for breaking right. up. And this will be handy when you come to lift your tatties well, as well. <laughs> yes, don't spear your tatties. <laughs> now, now that we've got this, the whole of the soil cultivated, Yes. what's next? Well, I think a rake, and we've got two different rakes here, George. <laughs> Oh, give me the worst one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this one. Well, um, I prefer the one that's just got yeah, the single here, because then I right. think you've got more to use. Not only right. as a rake, but you can take that as an angle and, it, and you can draw out a little drill for sowing right. your seeds. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's one use, but obviously the rake as well. Do you not find it annoying? A lot of people just like drag well, like this. Right, that's right. You tickle, I, yeah, you tickle. Yeah, tickle the soil. Because if you don't, if you don't, if you if you if you drag it, you end up with a big pile of stones at your feet and you don't know what to do with them. And a wee tip with your rake, never leave it this way. Or lying on the ground, because oh, you can stand you. on that. <laughs> so you always put uh, your rake... A, a lump in the forehead. Yeah, yeah. up like that. There you go. Right, that's that one. So oh, our last yep. tools that we're looking at are hose. Right, now, there you are. 
the Gerd Nur and his oh, pedal, as they say. Yes. Oh, yeah. What do you call it? A pedal. All oh, right. Well, that's a Scottish name. Well, draw ho. A draw ho for you. Okay, so yeah. draw ho. I mean, I suppose that is quite descriptive. Well, yes. It's like yeah, drawing yeah, it in. Yeah, that's good for yeah, earthing yeah. up your tattoos, isn't yeah, it? Or earthing right. up your leeks. Yes. Or you or can. Or you chop, don't you? You, you can like chop. It's a chopping, chopping yeah, action. Right. Now you can get. I mean, <laughs> there are so many different hoes. There's things called swoes, and there's this, and there's that. And there's the the flat ones, just a single flat blade. But this one with the the Y at the front, I think, is very. That's a that's a it's useful. It's traditional. Hoe. It's very much. I'm be just traditional. But that's <laughs> yeah. the thing. And keep this sharp at the front. Keep it sharp, sharp like with a file. And but it's the angle, isn't it's it? It's the angle of it there. You want it just so that when it's like that, just from about waist height, that it's actually um, able to penetrate the soil. And what's important is always who walking backwards. Absolutely. You're not standing on that nope. soil you're going backwards. And come back. And that way you're not standing on the weeds that you've just hoed out. In dry weather, you know, if you keep hoeing in dry weather, you actually save water because you cut the capillaries and the, the water can't get up from lower down. You've got this dust mulch on the top. And that is what you want. So keep the hole going, ho, when you can't see the weeds. Right. So, George, if we were to summarise on our essential long handle tools, yeah. um, let's go first of all for okay. the border okay. spade. A border spade. A border fork. A border fork. A hoe. Yep. And? And this rake. That's it. Not going to cost a fortune, is no. it? No. And any other tips? Make sure it's comfortable. Well, you have to make sure that these things are comfortable and that you're comfortable using them, uh, and because you're going to have them for a while. Well, like your spade. Yeah. It's pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. now it's over to one of our regular gardeners. It's Effie Papagiani, and she's in her allotment where she absolutely loves to grow all kinds of edibles, and that's in Dundee. Welcome back to my allotment here in Dundee. We are at one of the highest points of the city and I've been growing here for the last two years and now going into my third growing season at the allotment. As I head into this new year, I'm getting really excited for all the plans ahead for the growing season. So join me for a wander around the plot and we can have a look at what's growing. So I've come to this little patch of the plot because while at this time of year there's not so much that's happening with the annual vegetables, the perennial veg are having a moment, they're having their time to shine. And this is a really nice plant which is called Korean celery. And it has a flavor that's kind of similar to lovage, but it's a lot tougher. So even in the really cold, windy months, it keeps this really nice green foliage. And in fact, it's even putting out some new shoots here. And that's what I'll be harvesting because they're really nice and tender and they're lovely for putting in salads and stir fries and things like that. So that's the perennial celery. And then another nice perennial is this walking onion. And this is a really cool plant because it, it stays green throughout the year and then it puts out these big flowering shoots that aren't really flowers, they're a cluster of little bulbils, which is what will guarantee the next kind of generation of onions. So it puts these up and because they're heavy, it kind of leans down and that's why it's called walking because that's how it propagates itself. So this is the, this is the original clusters that I've planted and it does this bunching thing where it spreads. And then if you look down over here, this is the new growth, which was from last year's flower that kind of weighed itself down. And now here it is, the new growth. So by the end of the season, this will be the same height and then it'll continue to spread. And then I'll have a nice little group of this lovely perennial walking onion. So the way I harvest this one is I just kind of snip some of the green tops and you can pull it up and treat it like a spring onion because it does have that thicker base under the ground but if you just cut some of the green bits then you can just keep harvesting for the rest of the season or whenever you need it and i'll take some of that korean celery as well bring my little basket here so it's a bit easier to harvest
so this is one of the exciting things that's happening in the greenhouse at the minute. This is a peach tree. So this is actually a dwarf cultivar. It's called Garden Lady. And it's one that is really happy to stay in pots. So that's why I chose this variety so that it can happily sit in my rather small greenhouse. So I will be potting it on to a slightly bigger pot, but it doesn't need too big of a pot because it is a little dwarf tree. And I've brought it out here because it's flowering and peaches have a really long flowering season, but they come out in different bursts. So at the minute, there's a couple of flowers that are open and they'll die and then other ones will open. So you want to pollinate them a couple of times over their flowering season. So that's what I'll be doing now. This is the first pollination. And the reason that we do that is because they, peaches are self-fertile, but there's not a lot of pollinators that are going around in the minute and definitely not in my greenhouse. So I'll be doing that work for it. And all you kind of need is a paintbrush. And what you're aiming to do is to take the pollen from the anthers, which is the the bit that holds the pollen at the end of those little wiggly sticks and move it to the middle of the flower which is the stigma and which is going to turn into the fruit if you're successfully pollinating it. So you just take your paintbrush and you gently go over the flower and I'll do that for all the flowers that are open at the minute and then kind of transfer the pollen along. And when the other flowers open I'll do the same with them. And the reason that this lives in my greenhouse is because although peaches are hardy, the flowers themselves are not. So if you have a hard frost, like the one we had a couple of days ago, and this was outside, it would lose all its blossoms, and then I would lose all potential peaches for the season. So that would be a really sad day. So this lives in the greenhouse, and it'll be going back in there once I'm done with my pollinating. Now, George, this is the border that Brian planted up with alternative yeah. hedging to box. That's right, to replace the box. Now, because of the problems with box yeah, blight. Typical, though. Look at the box. It's as good as anything <laughs> that's here. But there have been problems. Well, there have been problems. So, for example, Eilitz Canata, it's struggling a bit, isn't it? Well, it's not done as well as one would want to, but I would salvage those plants and give them a chance, pot them up, and we might be able to use them somewhere else. Okay. But meanwhile, we've got replacements. Find an alternative, and this time we are going for another type of Lanistra, because yeah. that's Lanistra. Yes. Nitida. Aye. Yep. Golden yeah, form. Yeah. And, and this one, I mean, this is Lanistra piliata. It's yeah. one of the forms of the Magrum. Mm -hmm. And that grows out sideways. But I would think that if we treat this like a rabbit would and just keep pinching it, yeah. it will stay very, very tight. It will make a good fruit. I know you'll do a good prune. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Uh, other things, that, I mean, lavender's doing all right. Yes. Uh, but another Lanistra. Is tidy, it tidy tips? Tidy tips. This and winter. It turned its toes up. I think that's just been the brown. cold and the wet. Yep. Yeah, so we've I taken it out yeah. and we are going for you. I right. think a lot of people might think, <laughs> oh, my goodness, you <laughs> can get <laughs> huge. However... Again, got, if you prune it, you could keep it to what? Two feet, yeah, sixty no, centimetres. No bother in at height. all. You've got secateurs. Usually. Yes. Well, once we've maybe yeah. got them in, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do the we'll trim. What to do. But apart from trimming the top, these long roots here, I'm going to do a little bit of a root prune. Yeah. So yeah. cut that yeah. one. This one here. Yeah. Uh, because again, you've got these lovely fibrous yeah. roots which take up the Well, moisture. you want to encourage as much fibrous root as you possibly can because that's the feeding root. Yes, yeah, and when you it. do buy these in, because they are bare root, yeah. we've plunged these in water that's for right. several hours. And that is cheaper. Buying bare root is cheaper than buying things in containers. So, will I give that one to you and put it at yes, the I'll end? Yes, I'll put that at the end. So, right. what we're talking about uh, with getting the plants in, eight plants in it, two metres. That's right. Nice and tight like that, because you want to get a hedge quite quickly. It and really is important, important, isn't it? Yeah. OK, shall we start with the first yeah. one? So, the preparation of the ground. Well, what I've done with this is I've dug, dug a trench, uh, two spades. OK, it's my wee spade, but I've yeah. dug it two spades deep. And we've put bone meal on the, on the, on the soil. So that's and a nice slow-release fertiliser. Absolutely. And then some uh, leaf mould in as well. So we've got some good nutrition, so we're looking so for them to grow with. So right. are okay. we ready to put that yeah. one in? I'll just take that out. In you go. Okay. 
Right, if I just, just pull that there. And you know, you can, I like that give for it, a bit of a shuggle. Yeah, I'll give it a shuggle in that way. <laughs> None <laughs> of the air gaps. No, you don't want air gaps at all. I hope I'm nice and upright there. Yeah, yeah, now I'll, and then you're I'll gonna use the foot. It, use my big boots. There we go. And now can I use the, the left-handed secretaire? Yes, on, on you go. Right, where do you want me to go to? Should well, I, go, I would, go on, you tell me. I'm gonna say to about there. That's fine, absolutely, yeah. Take that, that bit take off. Take that off there, yeah. Yep. They're tough, you know, they're yep. tough. Important, isn't it? This is a poisonous plant. It is, so do wear, wear gloves. gloves. All parts Always of the wear plant gloves. are poisonous. Yeah, that's right. So, and then we could still maybe give it a little bit of a trim, you know, like this, yeah, going all yeah, over, just, couldn't we? Yeah. But just to tighten it up so that we get something which is going to be nice and even. But that's the height that we just want it to grow, so we'll keep it nice and trim. Anyway, we'll get on and plant this. That's good, isn't it? It's wonderful, oh, all this, yeah, Willow. Yeah. Now, this is the kind of thing that you're normally <laughs> cutting back on the first programme. Usually destroying them. But that destruction is quite important because we've, you know, we cut back the ones which are on the willow bank here. I cut the ones back on my pollarded willow at home. And the growth you get is just phenomenal. You know, and the colour just... It's great. I mean, so we've got the two willows and we've got a dogwood here as well. That's so right, yeah. When yeah. I look at this, George, I think propagation, some hardwood cuttings. Money saving. Eh? Money for money, definitely. Money, yeah. And in fact, we could try that as well. And, you know, sometimes they do a little bit of a oh, lattice work. I hate that. You don't, don't like that? I don't like that at all. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of this, the, the first programme in the 2024 series of Beach Grove Garden. Now, don't forget, <clears> if you want to watch this programme again, or maybe some of the programmes from last series, they're all on the iPlayer, and perhaps that'll help you plan ahead for this season. <laughs> and if you're planning ahead and you want to be planting your tatties, come and watch us next week, because on the veg plot, we're planting potatoes, uh, blight resistant varieties to boot, and we're going to be sowing some seeds. Also, Callum will be back next week in his allotment in Leven, and for a riot of colour, we're going to be looking at the national collection of Scylla, mm. and that's in Dumfries yeah. and Galloway. And that's blue. Oh, which wonderful. Is, oh, be all Favourite excited colour. with that. Anyway, that's it for this week. Come and see us again next week. But for now, goodbye. Bye bye.